With the upcoming release of the Nike Air Max 2090, I thought it would be interesting to take a slightly different view of these things and compare them to a classic Air Max 90 and look at the similarities and the differences between the two and then put it in my terms about whether or not I think the 2090 can fly or flop. Now you might have a difference of opinion from me which I totally appreciate and given that I'm kind of old and you're probably a lot younger than me, you could probably tell me whether or not this shoe has got any traction with the younger generation because I'm not really feeling it for my generation but that could just be a generation gap and I could be totally wrong. But what I want to do today is to take that iconic Air Max 90 colorway that I'll tell you about in a minute and compare it to an upcoming release of a 2090 which is the retro futurism colorway so looking at that retro futurism now you can probably guess which 20 uh, which air max 90 i'm going to compare it to uh, and see the differences and the similarities between them as we look forward to this upcoming release of the nike air max 2090. This is the Tokyo Bara 23 Sneaker Channel. Tokyo Bara 23 Sneaker Channel. Des. My name is Yopsuri Nodem. My name is And every single day from Tokyo, Japan, I bring you content about upcoming sneaker releases, sneaker news, and sneaker reviews. And today we're looking at this Nike Air Max 2090. We're going to compare it to a classic Nike Air Max 90 and see the similarities, see the differences, and decide if the 2090s have any hope of being a sneaker that could actually take the Nike brand onto its next level. And I'm not going to let you hang around much longer because I'm just going to go straight ahead and bring up this bang, the classic colour. That I was talking about was the bacon. So if we look at these uh, Air Max 90 bacons that should be on the screen screen right here, fingers crossed, the green screen has been holding up well as I've been shooting from home in this lockdown that we have in Japan. It's like a lockdown light here. It's not as strict as other places. I think I'm right in saying we've had something like 4,000 cases national in Japan of the coronavirus. So it's nowhere near quite as bad as in other places around the world. So, uh, uh, but I am, I do have to shoot from home, which I normally wouldn't do. And it's actually quite late at night, but it seems to be working out for me. Everything seems to be holding together uh, and hopefully right now what's holding together is that green screen. You can see those Air Max 90 bacons on there because they really do look like a good colorway to compare to these 2090 um, retro futurisms I think they're called and you can see if you look between the two here you can see that kind of the or it's not orange really it's like a brown or orange or there's beige kind of colors in there but there's I suppose bacon uh, you know the bacons are obviously bacons but when you compare it to those retro futurisms uh, you can see a sort of bacon in there as well and that way I think it's a good sneaker to sort of compare between the two and I definitely need people out there to tell me if it's just a generation gap that I'm not feeling the 2090s or if it's actually a bit of a clanger uh, but what we want to do is look at the similarities first and what we'll do is we'll look at the super major similarities between the two shoes and then gradually work our way towards the things that are not similar at all and the very first place I want to look at is on the air unit not on the air unit in the air unit if you have a look inside the air unit of uh, an air max 90 you can see that there's a sort of it's it's kind of cut into thirds. It's like there's three sections to it within as you look at it from the side. And then if we flip that over and have a look at the 2090s, you can see within the air unit, it's almost identical. So it's a very clear similarity. Then when we pull back from that 2090 air unit and have a look at it surround, it does have that same kind of motif of having a sort of stacked air unit within the rest of the shoe, but it's a totally different design and it doesn't look very much like the original Air Max 90s. So flipping back again to the bacon, you can see that kind of arrow effect on the Air Max 90 sort of air unit, the surround. Um, and then if we go back to the 2090s, you can see that it's a little bit different. What isn't different is that they've kept those horizontal lines on there. And this is where we start to go from sort of similar or same into a sort of area that's like, well, you know, there's 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 50-50 whether or not it does match the Air Max 90 and the Air Max 2090s. Um, and then what I'm talking about, like I say, is those horizontal lines that you can see that run right around the back. Um, of the Air Max 2090s. Now that didn't happen on the Air Max 90s. It was just uh, lateral and medial sides. You had those lines that surrounded the air unit and the air bubble on there. But on the 2090s, they take that all the way around the back and they're much more pronounced. The 2090s, I would say, not the 2090s, the Air Max 90s, um, they weren't quite so pronounced, the difference between the line, the sticky outy bit, to the jagged edge, and then the deeper part. And they were much more sort of shallow, if you like. But then on the 2090s, you can see it's much more of a pronounced effect. Uh, and it's much more of a detail rather than um, just being sort of a subtle thing. And if you watch my channel a lot, you'll know I prefer the subtle side of things. So, uh, uh, but yeah, that, that those lines that run around the back of the sneaker, it's a new addition to 2090s. But it still harks back to the, the Air Max 90s and it still sort of has that echo or that shadow 
Shadow of the Air Max 90, which is, of course, a classic silhouette in its 30th anniversary year. Air Max 90s themselves, I think, dropped for the first time around about 1988. I'm not entirely sure when Air Max 1s dropped, but I do know recently this Air Max 1 dropped. There were two. There was the Amsterdam and the Londons, which were really fine sneakers, and they really stayed true to the original design and the original silhouette and just added a few, you know, elements of London and Amsterdam into the colorway. Um, so it's, you know, like, I, I kind of like my retro sneakers, but what I'm not a huge fan of uh, is if we take a look at this Air Max 90 silhouette and then flip that out and have a look at this, the Air Max 2090 silhouette, you can see that it's, they've tried to make it an evolution, you know, a next stage. They've tried to take a classic silhouette and advance it on, which I think is a bit of a mistake if you ask me conceptually, not just in terms of the actual structure of what they've done with the sneaker. Uh, but anyway, going back to that heel section and that those lines that run around the full back end of the midsole, which they didn't do on the Air Max 90s. If we also go up from that, where the classic Air Max 90 branding was on the back, maybe best seen through Undefeated. Let's put up an Undefeated um, heel branding on here, because this is one of my favorite things over the last 12 months when the Undefeated line teamed up with the Air Max 90 line, and they actually switched out the branding on the back to the Undefeated, you know, um, what's that called? Five stripe branding, tally mark branding on there. Um, and I thought that was really cool. It's iconic. Uh, and of course, they've tried to update that, but stay true to it again on the 2090s. And of course, you've got those horizontal lines in there, which kind of echo back to the Air Max 90s. But they're, you know, they're just not as cool. The, you know, the, the iconicness of the Air Max 90 is gradually being lost as they play with these little bits of the details on there. So uh, for me, it's a bit of a mm, in those parts. But they're the last two parts that really um, you can make a real strong case for saying Air Max 90, Air Max 2090. Uh, but we're starting to get apart and drifting away from that original silhouette um, and the last place that really hangs on by, by the, the skin of its teeth is the mudguard along the side and hopefully you can see the bacons behind me here and see that mudguard again it's iconic with a window towards uh, the back end towards the heel and the ankle area uh, that usually says air max in there and again those horizontal lines would be in there on the air max 90 all of that is gone but you do still have a sort of mudguard roughly in the same dimensions as that original mudguard uh, and towards the back instead of having in a window you've got an imprint of a futuristic looking design of the word air on there uh, but like I say that's kind of the last sort of echo or the last thread that hangs on to the original Air Max 90s uh, and then when we get up into the upper they've tried to honor that layered effect let's stay with the bacons here and you can see that layered effect which comes from the layer of materials the different materials at different points across the upper of the sneaker creating that contrast between the colors of the different materials and the actual the, the texture of the different materials as well. All of that is gone in the Air Max 2090s. It's just a sort of uniform upper, but they understand, the people at Nike who designed this, they understand that those contrasts and those playing colors off one another is an important factor or an important element of Air Max sneakers and Air Max 90s in particular. Uh, and so they've tried to maintain that by um, embedding in that upper some color design and some sort of color transitions. And, uh, and like I said, I, th I thought it was good to do it with, um, you know, we're looked at these uh, retro futurisms and I thought it was good to look at those bacons because of the similarities in the colors and hopefully what you can see behind me here is that upper and those orange colors in there which kind of fade and transition throughout the entirety of the upper which are supposed to represent the different materials that you would have seen on the Air Max 90 doesn't quite catch it for me. Um, the last kind of um, little thing that I thought was interesting is that uh, I'll, I'll try and do that thing where I switch between the two very quickly and hopefully you'll be able to see a silhouette or an outline of the outsole and you can see there's a couple of sort of jagged points as you look along the side of the outsole which are sort of kept when you look along the outside uh, of the 2090s and compared to the, the Air Max 90s. So hopefully that's holding up in the back here and you can see what I'm talking about especially in the front half of the sneaker where you get those little triangles that sort of pierce up from the outsole into the midsole uh, but again it's, it's the last real echo of the Air Max 90s that you can see in these Air Max 2090s. Uh, I don't really get it. Um, it reminds me of the Air Max uh, 720s, a shoe that I've not at all liked. I've reviewed it maybe twice in total and one of them I didn't like it so much. The thumbnail I put up was just a black rectangle with no picture and no words on it uh, because I didn't like the shoe so much and I 
I, I do. I hate the 720s. I think they're. Uh, I, I don't get them. I think they're pointless. Um, and to be honest, these um, 2090s, I don't really get it either. Uh, and it, it doesn't make much sense to me. It seems like they're trying to milk like the the Air Max 90 in a way that doesn't really make any sense. But that might be a generational thing. And maybe you out there look at this and say, you know what, that's really fire. And they have evolved the sneaker. I personally don't see it. Uh, but if you do see it, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, for now, though, it's time for me to sign off. And thank you guys for checking out my content. I truly appreciate. I hope you appreciate this look at the Air Max 2090s from a slightly different angle instead of just going in there and reviewing these upcoming colorways. There's three or four that are dropping, uh, I think, right about May 2nd or 3rd. Uh, but instead of doing it that way, I thought, you know, let's compare it to what it is. Uh, and that's an evolution of the Air Max 90s. That's my take on it. If you agree, let me know in the comments down below. If you disagree, let me know in the comments down below. I appreciate hearing uh, both sides of an argument. Uh, for now, though, time for me to sign off. Thank you guys for checking out my content. But I do what I do at the end of every single video, which is tell you guys. Guys, I do this every single day, and that means that you are guaranteed to see me tomorrow.